Hey everyone, this is Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime, and I don't know if you've heard, but the Switch is doing all right for itself. Uh, in fact, there's a recent report out of Bloomberg that the Switch is on track to basically outsell the Wii based upon the initial stock-related exchange stuff post-launch. Now, we're not talking about a year-over-year -year comparison here because that would include things like Pokemon Go, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, and all that stuff that could have greatly impacted Nintendo's overall stock price going from 2015 to 2016. Uh, so what we're talking about is actually how, what has happened to their stock since the launch of the console compared to their previous two home console launches. So the Wii, the 100 million seller, in its first month or so after launch, the stock performance of the company was only about 8.6 to 8.9 percent higher than the standard uh, stock valuation at that time. So that means that Nintendo stock basically rose about 9 percent over what it was before the console's launch in the span of a month. And there's going to be a graph up on the screen. And you'll, what you'll notice is that the middle line that shows a really gradual increase, that is the Nintendo Wii. And that just kept increasing and kept increasing over time. Uh, the bottom line you'll see on that graph is the Wii U. And you'll notice that the stock declined after the Wii U launch and just kept going down for some time. Now, what's very interesting about this is what has been happening to the Nintendo Switch line. As in, what is happening to Nintendo stock today? You'll see the stock valuation is going up at a much more rapid pace than it was with the Wii. In fact, as of today, it's something like 20% higher than it was before the Nintendo launch. Now, this isn't necessarily that the stock itself is 20% higher. This has to do with the valuation based upon the, the Japanese marketplace. So it, it, there's a lot of fine-tuning data behind all of this. But the point is that these are the three post-launch comparisons of the valuation of Nintendo. And this is important because this valuation is a direct comparison to previous console launches and it kind of shows what the market is doing in terms of predicting Nintendo's success moving forward. And with it outpacing the Wii at this stage, it still doesn't mean much, right? Because we had GameStop earlier, you know, say, oh, that they think it could be as popular as the Wii. And I still think it's crazy for any analyst or any, you know, people, even Nintendo themselves, uh, to ever say this thing is going to sell as much as the Wii because the Wii is their highest selling home console of all time. And it's fine to have that as like an internal goal. Like maybe Nintendo wants to sell 100 million units. I mean, I'm sure they want to sell 150 million units and top out the DS. But reality is that sometimes you have to keep your expectations in check. Now, Nintendo Switch is off to a phenomenal start. And I know a lot of this can be attributed to Zelda, right? You know, Zelda is huge, Zelda is popular, and, you know, if you can't tell, I'm wearing a Breath of the Wild, a brand new uh, sweat jacket here. Uh, it is potentially game of the year this year, and potentially one of the best Zelda games ever made, which means that it could be Nintendo's potentially best system seller they've ever made. And it's crazy saying that because Wii Sports right now is Nintendo's best ever system seller ever made. And I don't know if Zelda could top Wii Sports. Wii Sports sold crazy numbers. You know, it was 50, 60, 70 million units. It was something nuts because it came with the Wii. So this doesn't come with the system, but it seems to be that it has a really high attach rate. Something like 90, 95% of people who bought a Switch own Breath of the Wild for it. But uh, it's very interesting because there is still reason to get excited about the Switch. Nintendo has been heavily advertising the Switch. It is all over cable TV, satellite TV, YouTube. I, I can't even watch YouTube videos without seeing Switch ads. I've seen ads on Pandora. I've seen ads on Hulu. On you know, I haven't seen them on Netflix, but Netflix doesn't really do advertising like that outside of their own stuff. But I have seen ads everywhere for the Switch. And now I'm seeing the ads ramp up, you know, pointing towards Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is the next big game coming out. Then after that, the ads might start targeting ARMS. Uh, you know, it, it's very interesting seeing that Nintendo has put a massive marketing budget behind the Switch, and it's working, right? 
you still are not able to go to stores and find switches on store shelves. Despite the fact that this box right here, these are heading out to stores. GameStop has gotten more of these since launch. Walmart has gotten more of these since launch. Target, all of your consumer electronic places have gotten more of these in boxes for their shelves and they are selling out almost before they even arrive, right? Uh, there's many news reports I, I, I go around the web the news is just people saying, hey, the Switch is in stock, and then it's out of stock. It's in stock and it's out of stock. It never stays in stock for more than even a 12-hour period, uh, whether it's online or inside a retail store. Uh, that's just crazy to me how quickly uh, this system is still selling out. And from what we know, uh, or, or what we can assume, Nintendo ramped up production, right? That's what they said, that, that they've increased their production. They were prepared to increase production in case demand hit um, a high that they weren't sure it was going to hit. They, you know, they didn't want to pull a Spirit Tracks, right? For those who don't know, Spirit Tracks was overmade, especially in Japan. They predicted it would sell extremely well in Japan, just like Phantom Hourglass said. It didn't, and it ended up in discount bins like two weeks later for like 20 bucks. So... They, you know, they didn't want to do that with the Switch. They didn't want to overproduce the Switch at launch, have 7 million available, but only able to sell 2 million, and then they have all these units just sitting there that aren't selling that Nintendo's losing money on. Uh, so this is, you know, for, for those who don't know, Business 101, this is why you have shortages. It's better to have shortages than it is to have overproduction. So for what we know, they are producing the system faster than they were able to produce the Wii back in 2006, and it's still selling out. So... It's weird to me because this Bloomberg article ends with uh, a sales projections, and I'll throw an image of that up, where the projections uh, come from all these various you know, anal analytical groups, and some are saying it's going to sell $5 million in the, by the end of fiscal year, March 2018. Some are saying it's going to sell $8 million or $10 million or $14 million. And it's really weird seeing the large variation in these numbers because we don't, we don't have anything exact from Nintendo. We're not, we're go, we are going to have pretty exact figures, if not to a T, as of like April 28th or April 24th or whenever they, they do their, their final fiscal meeting of the year uh, before everything wraps up. And it's very interesting that uh, a lot of people out there think the Switch has already sold 2.5 to 3 million units just last month. And... Yet there's an analyst out there projecting it's only going to sell five million. That means it's only going to sell two million the rest of the year. I, I I doubt that. I mean, I could see that if these things were starting to hit store shelves now and not selling anymore. Like if I walked in the GameStop and I saw, oh, they have twenty Nintendo Switches in stock and they just aren't moving units. Okay, then sales have really slowed down. But right now sales are not slowing down for this thing. It is hard to get a hold of one. Um, and you know that's okay. That's, that's expected. That's why pre-ordering still matters today in 2017 for hardware. I don't think pre-ordering software beyond limited editions really matters. But for hardware, it does matter if you want to play that system within the launch window, as Nintendo likes to call it. Um, and obviously, you know, when you get hardware within the launch window, there might be issues. Uh, and we've covered some of those issues. You know, you can watch some of the, my prior videos on the left Joy-Con issue that Nintendo has already talked about on, you know, Nintendo Switch bend gate, as we called it. Uh, and I am perfectly happy with my Nintendo Switch. And I am very happy for Nintendo. And I really hope that this is the home run that they've been waiting for, uh, that we've been waiting for as gamers. Because I think the Wii... And how successful it was, you'll still find a lot of lapsed Nintendo fans or a lot of hardcore Nintendo fans that were not happy with the Wii era. They didn't like the motion controls. And it's ironic because the Switch has motion controls. But uh, the Switch feels like a system built for adult gamers. And that's something the Wii didn't feel like it was built for. It was built for families. It was built for everyone gathering in a living room. And this thing's built to, to adapt right? This is an adaptive system. Here it is in tabletop mode. It is built to adapt. It is built to be used any way the consumer wants. You want to have your Wii Sports games? You could do that with the motion controls. You have instant multiplayer, right? Two controllers. I know people want to talk about comfortable, uncomfortable. It's usable. It's usable like this, you know? Then this is just tabletop mode. So this is just me plopping it down on the table and being like, yeah, let's go. I can get up, get the kickstand, 
Here I am playing it portable on the bus, on the train, on an airplane. You know, I plop this in the dock and I'm playing it on my TV. It's The system is the master of convenience and it's being convenient in a way that adults need it to be convenient, right? And that's what's so great about this system in comparison to the Wii, which the Wii was built to expand the gaming audience to audience to you know to people who just don't play games. Whereas this isn't meant necessarily to expand the audience, more so to cater to an audience that has a harder and harder time finding ways to play video games in their ever increasing busy life. Uh, yet still being able to satisfy those that do have the time to sit down on their couch on their big screen TV and enjoy video games and do so in a way that doesn't necessarily feel like it's compromising, right? No, this is not an Xbox Scorpio pushing six teraflops with, you know, an 1100, you know, whatever megahertz thing of 40 compute units and all this crazy stuff we just learned about the Scorpio. No, that's not a Nintendo Switch. But if Breath of the Wild is any indication, which by the way, Breath of the Wild was developed for Wii U, this system is more than capable of handling a AAA gaming experience. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what third parties do with this, what Nintendo continues to do with it moving forward. Uh, this is Nintendo Rumble Jance from Nintendo Prime. And the Switch, man, it's doing well. Japanese markets are excited. Gamers are excited. I think, I think it's safe to say N Nintendo, they did it. I'll look forward to playing against all you guys in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at the end of the month. I'm signing out. Happily. Like, good news. <laughs> Nintendo's not doomed! <laughs>